Hello and welcome to Update News, a collaboration of Flyer TV and Flyer News. I'm Kenzie Fell. And I'm Bridget McElhenney. Every other week we'll be bringing you the latest news from the University of Dayton campus. Let's get you caught up on the current issue's hot topics. The University of Dayton officially announced Tuesday morning its new president-elect, Eric F. Spina, who was unanimously appointed by the Board of Trustees. Spina comes from New York Syracuse University, where he spent nine years as the Vice Chancellor and Provost out of 27 years total. He is noted for his student-centric nature and for bringing strength through diversity to Syracuse. Spina's term as the university's 19th president will begin on July 1, 2016. He assured faculty and staff that he holds no hard feelings against the Flyers after handing the Orangemen an epic loss in the 2014 NCAA tournament. For most college students, summer is a time to reconnect with old friends, work at internships, or return home to family. However, one University of Dayton senior had a very different experience this past summer. John Piercelli, a political science major with minors in economics and human rights studies, spent six weeks backpacking throughout the Balkans. Grounded at the American University in Kosovo, Piercelli studied post-war conflict resolution, peacekeeping, and the region's historic experience with the Dayton Peace Accords. Alongside students from around the world, Piercelli visited places like the Archduke Ferdinand assassination site that allegedly started World War I and the city where around 8,000 Bosnian Serbs were killed amidst the Bosnian War. Overall, Piricelli stated that the people he met were unexpectedly welcoming and kind-hearted, despite fear of anti-American bias. Now let's settle back at school, Piricelli hopes to spark a larger conversation around history, memory, tribute, and trauma as the 20th anniversary of the Dayton Peace Accords arrives. The University of Dayton will be celebrating 500 years of Latin America history in the United States throughout this academic year. UD will host various free events courtesy of a grant from the National Library Association and the National Endowment for the Humanities. These include a film, a speaker series, panel discussions, and an art exhibit. Communications and Outreach Librarian Katie Kelly is responsible for earning UD the $10,000 grant. It is awarded to more than 200 librarians, museums, and nonprofits to honor Latin American history. The celebration kicked off yesterday with a screening of Viva Baseball a documentary about the history of Latino baseball struggles. Events will run now from March. The University of Dayton recently received never-before-heard tapes of interviews with beloved alum Irma Bombeck from her only authorized biographer Lynn Colwell. Bombeck graduated in 1949 and is considered one of America's greatest humorists in the past 50 years. Bombeck appeared as a correspondent on Good Morning America, published 12 books, developed a sitcom, and forever changed the image of women with her newspaper column called At Wit's End. The tapes are currently being digitized so they can be accessed for free by all university students in Albert Emanuel Hall. Outside of this project, the university strives to emphasize Bombeck's life's work in association with the University of Dayton. Athletics welcome three new assist assistant coaches this year. Michael Tankey will be an assistant for the men's soccer team, Austin King will be the offensive line coach for the football team, and Stephanie Womack is with the women's soccer team. Tanky is from northwestern Indiana and attended and played soccer at the University of Rhode Island. He went on to play for the Rhinos in the United Soccer League for three years. He has coaching experience from the University of Rhode Island, where he acted as a graduate assistant for his former coach. Tanky is hoping to help the men's soccer team reach the NCAA tournament. King is from Cincinnati and started his career in football in high school at Purcell High. He was recruited to play football for Northwestern University and later moved up to the NFL to play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Atlanta Falcons. His goal this year is to get the team to the Pioneer Football League Championship. Workman is from Charleston, West Virginia. She has played collegially at Moorhead State and coached locally during her four years there. After graduation, she was an assistant coach at the University of Cincinnati for three years, then spent four years coaching at Concord University before moving to the SEC. Workman's main role as coach will be to work with the goalkeepers. All three teams are set to play this weekend. That's it for this week's edition of Update News. I'm Bridget McElhoney. And I'm Kenzie Fell. Make sure to grab the latest issue of Flyer News from a newsstand near you. And tune in soon for our next episode. Thanks for watching and have a fun family weekend.